Dear Lord, once again, we just come before you and we're just so thankful for a time that we can meet together where we can come and praise you and worship you. We thank you for your word and when we hear something from your word just now, pray that you'll work in our hearts and we just um, thank you for your greatness, Lord, and just pray that you'll meet with us this morning and we just pray these things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. everyone, welcome to New Beginnings Baptist Church. Okay, uh, the first song we're going to sing this morning is entitled, Standing on the Promises. May you all stand and we will sing, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord Bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment to the Spirit call Resting in my Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, and standing on the promises of God. Thank you. You may be seated. The next song you're going to sing is a wonderful Savior. I have started out to follow Jesus Every day, every hour I want to be Just a little more like my blessed Jesus He means more than all the world to me Oh, wonderful, wonderful is Jesus He gave His life on cruel Calvary He'll be there when I start to cross the Jordan what a wonderful Savior is He In His footsteps I will always follow In His ever-living presence I would be Though the storms of life may rage, my Lord will guide me What a kind and faithful Savior is He Oh, wonderful, wonderful is Jesus He gave His life on cruel Calvary He'll be there when I start to cross the Jordan What a wonderful Savior is He Alright, welcome to church this morning. We're glad that you're here. Uh, thank you each and every one for coming out. I'm looking around and uh, we don't have any first-time visitors, but we do have some first-time-in-a-long-time-in-person uh, not visitors, 
Uh, many of you may not have met uh, Brother Jerry and Sister Luella. Uh, they were he was they were living up in Townsville, and they're down here for a bit now. And so we're glad to have them. Uh, Lord willing, they can just stay here. That's you know that's what we're we're saying. They just stay here. Uh, but anyways, it's good to have them. They're they're from Townsville. And uh, they've been attending our church on Wednesday night for some time now. And when Brother uh, Jerry was down for some treatment a few years ago, um, some, they came to some services. I think she came to some services. And so I get a chance to meet them. Um, they're, they're newer in person to the church, but not new to the church, right? And uh, so some of you get to put faces, you know, from seeing them on Wednesday night and vice versa. And so we're glad they're here. Now, if you do have an offering that you'd like to give this morning, you can either give online like you normally do, or the offering box and the missions box are over on the welcome table. Um, everything giving in missions goes to missions. Everything given in the offering box goes to help with the ministries um, of the church. And um, if you have a child that's not in children's church, also on the ta- welcome table, there is a children's sermon notes page <clears throat> that you can fill out and uh, do your best. You may not get every block filled out. That's okay. Um, just, you know, just interact with it and do that type of thing. And, and if you complete that and you bring it to me after service, uh, we do have some prizes for you to be able to, to get. And uh, we'd love to give you one of those. And uh, some things that will be going on. Last Friday night, uh, the ladies had their meeting. If I remember right, there were 23 ladies present. Uh, Despite a number of people uh, being sick or any uh, the number of different reasons that they weren't able to be there that evening, uh, sick or work or whatever, Um, but that was it was a good turnout. It seemed like they had a good time. Um, You know, Brother Jerry and I had good time fellowshipping. Well, they all did whatever whatever they did, and um, and it was a good night. So um, thank you for all who came to that, and I'm sure you look forward to another one. Uh, sometime soon on the 18th of this month, be, be planning to be here. Uh, we're having our friend day and our baptism Sunday. And so invite some people to church, invite some friends to church, invite some neighbors to church, some co-workers to church. Hey, invite your enemies to church, okay? It doesn't bother me. Uh, just br- bring people to church. We'll have a special gospel message that day. And then immediately after the morning service, so 9, 15, um, growth group time, 10.30, morning service time. Then immediately after the service, everyone is invited back to our house. And uh, we're going to have uh, a barbecue lunch. And if you could, if you're coming to the lunch, there's a sign-up table on the sheet. Do one of two, do, there's two sign-up sheets, so sign up to both things. One, put your, put your name or your family name and the number of people that you're bringing. So that way we can have the right number of food, just like we did the last lunch. Does that make sense? And then there's another sign-up sheet if you want to be able to bring either something to drink, like a two liter of juice, two liter of soda, water, whatever you want to bring, uh, that type of thing, or a uh, 20 packets of pre-packaged chips, you know, uh, crisps, uh, that type of thing, or a dessert. Whatever you bring on the dessert end, uh, please make sure it's finger food. Uh, so that way everything can be eaten with our fingers and, and those type of things, very informal. And then after lunch, we're going to have a baptism service. So we'll sing a couple of songs. Uh, we'll have an explanation from the Bible what baptism is all about. And then we'll have, right at this stage, one person to be baptized. And if you're here today and you know Christ your Savior, but you've never been scripturally baptized, please see me. We'd love to help you uh, take that step in your life and following the Lord and believers' baptism on that day. And so that's on the 18th of September. And then, guys, be getting ready. It's only a few weeks away. It's uh, the, that last week of September, so it's that Tuesday. I believe it's either the 26th or the 27th through the 1st of October. So Tuesday uh, through Saturday, men and boys camp. And we're looking forward to that. Uh, Brother Pete and I have been discussing food. And uh, he came over to my house yesterday and said, Are you ready, ready for me to make your mouth water? And I said, yes. And he told me some things that uh, if you're not at men's camp, you're going to miss it. And if you think at men's camp, we're going to be roughing it and not eating well and all those type of things, you keep thinking that 
and I'll keep eating, all right? Uh, but make your plans to be there at men's camp. There are a lot of things in, pre- in preparation for that. And so uh, we're looking forward to that time uh, together. And uh, before we have our scripture reading, I uh, wish everyone a happy Father's Day. And I know Father's Day and Mother's Day are sometimes are good holidays, sometimes they're difficult holidays, depending on whether you had a, a father or mother that was there all the time or whether it was a, a single parent home or whatever it is. But ultimately, we know this about this day is Father's Day, is that no matter what, we have a heavenly father that has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And so uh, those of you that are fathers present this evening, I mean this evening, this morning, you just can't tell. There's no windows. I don't know what's going on. Half of, no, uh, this morning, as you leave right under the welcome screen with the announcements that go by, which by the way, look at the announcements so that way you know what's going on. Right underneath there is a table. And on that table is a gift for every father present. Uh, I'll just tell you what it is. It's, it's one of them. It's a little jar that has a red powder in it. That is a nice meat rub. To, to barbecue or cook some meat in. There's a, a little tag on there with this, a page that has instructions on how to do that. Then in the other jar, there is like an Italian herb rub where you can uh, use that. I guess you could use that on meat or you could use that on vegetables. I'll tell you this. Uh, Brother Brian was over when we tested him out. The meat rub is wonderful on pork. Uh, the Italian spice rub is wonderful on roasted potatoes. And there's a couple of... of chocolate bars or stuff in the, the little bags. So just grab one, dads, grab one little bag. Um, that's your gift from the church. And uh, if your father is not present, uh, you can grab one little bag for your father and bring, him, bring it home to him uh, so that way he doesn't miss out on those type of things. All right. Uh, but if you take your Bible, turn to John chapter 14. Uh, John chapter 14, a very familiar passage of scripture. And Josiah is going to come and he'll be reading verses 1 to verse 7 for the scripture reading this morning. As Pastor said, the scripture reading today is from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. John chapter 14, starting in verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. The last song uh, we're going to sing before the message is entitled, My Father Plan It All. Okay, we will sing all four verses for this week. What though the way be lonely, and dark the shadows fall, I know wherever he leadeth, my Father plan it all. I sing through the shade and the sunshine, I'll trust Him whatever befall. I'll sing for I cannot be silent, My Father plan it all. There may be sunshine tomorrow, Shadows may break and flee, It will be the way He chooses, The Father's plan for me. I sing to the shade and the sunshine, I'll trust Him whatever before. I'll sing that cannot be silent. My Father plan it all. He guides my faltering footsteps along the weary way. For well He knows the pathway will lead to endless things. I sing to the shade and the sunshine. I'll trust Him whatever before. I'll sing for I cannot be silent. 
my father and it all. A day of light and gladness, on which no shade will fall. Till this hell all awaits me, my father planned it all. I sing through the shade and the sunshine, I'll trust him whatever before. I sing for I cannot be silent, my father planned it all. All right, those going to Children's Church can be dismissed at this time. Everyone else, take your Bibles, open to John chapter 14, and uh, we'll have the message for this morning. Now, this year has been an unusual year. Uh, We've spent part of our time in the States for Brianna's graduation, and it's unusual for me in this way. Uh, This year, I'm experiencing things and doing some things I never dreamt would ever happen. Uh, This is my second Father's Day this year. You say, what do you mean? In the U.S., they celebrate Father's Day in June, and we were in the U.S. in June, and so I had Father's Day in June. And then we come back to Australia, and Father's Day is in September. So this is the uh, first year I've ever had two Father's Days. You know, that's that's fine by me. And uh, uh, next year, I only get one. And uh, next year, maybe my wife deserves more than one Mother's Day. Um, But anyways, and so when we were in the States, my family that was with me at that time got me Father's Day presents. And so uh, they looked at Josiah and said that we got him in America. You're responsible for here. And uh, we'll see what happens. But we had a wonderful time that. And and then also something else happened while we were in the States that I never thought and dreamt I'd ever be able to do. And so this Father's Day, I'm preaching from my father's Bible that he was given and had on death row when he was in prison. And so I never dreamt that that would ever happen. So if you, I had someone immediately already say to me when they saw this, saw two Bibles, Dan's very observant, he saw two Bibles in my briefcase, he said, Pastor, why do you have two Bibles? I said, well, I'm teaching Sunday school out of one and I'm preaching Sunday morning out of the other. He looked at me kind of puzzled, I said, this is my dad's Bible. And he just went, oh. That's neat. And, uh, and so, yeah, I was given, when we were in, in the U.S., we were having that meeting on a, on a Saturday, and a lady I had never met, come to find out, she was my cousin, uh, walks in and sits down right, before, right as service is starting and puts this in my lap and stands up and walks out. And I looked down and I opened it up, and when you open it up, you'll see in there, that's my dad's name, and he wrote on death row, and then up there is his inmate number um, from, from death row, and uh, he wrote an interesting quote in the Bible that I'm still scratching my head on, but here's what it says, uh, Satan and his demons are like cockroaches. When the lights invade their territory, they run for the shadows. See, how theological is that? I don't know, but it's interesting. And then I learned in here a very unusual thing that I never knew, and that is in 2001, uh, my father was ordained in the ministry, like while he was in prison. See, how does that happen? I don't know, but you learn some new things, all right? So this morning, I'm going to, you know, for the first time and never thought I'd be able to do this. Uh, well, I'll preach from this Bible. You say, what are you going to do tonight? I'm preaching from that Bible. Uh, this is just a one-off thing and uh, interesting times. And uh, Father's Day is always an interesting day because, you know, when, you, when you're a pastor and you're preaching on Father's Day, you're very aware of this one thing. And I think every father would admit it this morning. We're not perfect, are we? So sometimes Father's Day is kind of hard to preach on. This is what the Bible says the Father should be like, you know. But this, this Sunday, we're just going to continue on in our series uh, because it's really about the Father's business. We're talking about uh, Jesus in his own words and, and who Christ is and letting Christ define who he is for us. Not letting our culture define, not letting people define, but in Christ's own words, there, there are seven I am passages, remember? And, and he says, I am, I am, I am. Well, if Jesus is saying I am, let's look what he is, correct? And so this morning you heard as we uh, were, were, had the scripture reading, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, in cha- this is an interesting passage of scripture. In chapter 13, Jesus is preparing the disciples for his departure. He had the last Passover with them before his death. 
Remember, He washed the disciples' feet. He broke bread with them. And He also revealed that He was going to be betrayed soon. He even revealed to the twelve who the betrayer was. He was the one who took bread and sopped at the same time as Jesus did. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were one of the disciples, that would make, if Jesus said, the one who sops bread with me is the one who is, I would lose all appetite for bread. I would be like, okay, there's bread here on the table, but I'm not eating it. If I don't eat it, I can't sop it with him. I can't be the one, you know? And so that, that takes place. And with all this taking place, he now gives his disciples a promise and teaching about heaven. Remember, he, he just told who would be his betrayer. He, he had just washed their feet. He had just told them about his the coming departure. And what's the very first thing he says in chapter 14? Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Wouldn't you think that after being told all the disciples were just told, their hearts would be very troubled? I mean, they've just given up everything. They'd spent over three years traveling with Jesus, learning from Jesus, and Jesus is now talking about his departure to them, and everything they'd been living their life for for the last three years was about to be completely turned upside down. And I don't know about you, but any time change takes place, isn't it a troubling time? Isn't your heart kind of like, I don't know if this is good. I don't know if I want this. I don't know. And then your mind starts racing. And then you start thinking about all the possible scenarios of what's going to take place and how it's going to turn out. And oh, how am I going to do with this? And now Jesus stops and says, hey, guys, don't let your heart be troubled. Let me give you some promises. Let me teach you some things. Let me reveal myself to you just you 12 in this room, let me tell you something. Let me show you who I am. And so as we, as we look at that, he, he gives the promise that he goes to prepare a place for them. And he gives another I am to answer his disciples' questions. I mean, wouldn't you think that was a, a wonderful question? Verse 5, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Hey, if you don't know where, if someone says they're going to be leaving, but you don't know where they're going, or isn't it going to be kind of hard to figure out the way to get to them? If I were to say to you, all right, this morning I'm going to be leaving in the middle of the service, and I'm going to be going away, uh, but I want you to come with me and find me. Your first question would be, uh, Pastor, where are you going? Wouldn't it? So do you see Thomas's question? Um, uh, how do we know the way? If we don't even know where you're going, how do we know the way? Well, that's when we get this answer. Jesus said the name, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So this is a good question for us all to consider today. How can we know the way? How can we be sure that we know the way? Number one, we see that Jesus is the way to heaven. Notice he did not say, I will show you the way. Notice he didn't say, uh, he didn't say this, here is a way, or here is the way. Do you understand there's a lot of people out there that say there are many ways to get to heaven. There are many ways to God. There are many paths that all lead to the same place. That is not true. Have you ever noticed that generally, sometimes there's only one way to get somewhere and one way to get out? That's heaven. It's not like you can take an alternate route. There are no detours. There are no alternative routes. There are no ways to, to find another way to get there. He is the only way. But also remember this, you cannot follow Jesus to heaven. I say, what do you mean? Well, think about it. There's a lot of things that Jesus did that you can do, but it doesn't mean you're going to heaven. So what do you mean? Well, Jesus was baptized, wasn't he? In the Jordan River. 
And you can be baptized, but it doesn't mean you're going to heaven. But I did what Jesus did. That's okay. That's wonderful. But it doesn't mean you're going to heaven. You know what happens if you get baptized and you haven't put your faith and trust in Christ? You go into the baptistry as a, as a dry sinner. You go down and become a wet sinner, and you come back up out of it as a wet sinner. That doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't help you. You see, you can... Uh, Jesus loves people, did he not? That's why he came and gave himself. And you can love people and still be lost. Hey, I know a lot of unsaved people that are what we would call today philanthropists, aren't they? They give a lot of their money to the poor. They, they, they dig wells in Africa. They, they help, you know, developing countries. They, they donate technology. They, you know, do all these type of things. Hey, Jesus loved people. I love people. Therefore, I'm going to heaven. No, does not mean that. Because you cannot follow Jesus to heaven. It won't happen. Well, I know, I know. He was a man of prayer, wasn't he? But you can pray and be lost. Do you know what? Before, we ever, uh, before my family ever came to know Christ as their Savior, we were highly involved. Well, we weren't involved, but we were supposed to be Catholics. You say, what do you mean supposed to be? It's probably one of those like Christmas and Easter things, you know. Uh, the only person, and I don't even remember that. Like my mom told me we were Catholic and I was christened in the Catholic Church, but all my life I've never remember going to church at all, ever. Do you know what? I, I, I've met a lot of people who pray, but they're not saved. They haven't put their faith and trust in Christ. And you can be here this morning and, and you, can be, you, know, you can be baptized and, and you can love people and, and you can pray to God and all those types of things, but it doesn't mean you can follow Jesus to heaven. It does not mean that in, in the least bit. You see, salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ. You must believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me, is what it says. Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's taught to us many, many times throughout Scripture. Look with me back at John chapter 3 and verse 16. And John chapter 3 and verse 16, the Word of God says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, what? believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How does the word of God say that you have everlasting life and not perish? You believe in Jesus Christ. You put your faith and trust in what Christ and Christ alone did on the cross. You turn from whatever it was you were trusting to get you there. Hey, if you were trusting baptism to get you there, forget it and go to him. If you are trusting, but I love people, forget that and go to him. By the way, when you know Christ as your Savior, you still will be, should be baptized. You still should love people. You still should pray. There's still some things you should do, right? But those don't get you there. Those don't, it's your faith and trust in Christ. So, who's ever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Verse 31. The word of God says, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Well, do you believe in God? Well, that, you know what? I, I, I'll never forget. I remember the day where I was sitting and I was trying to talk to my, my great grandpa one time and we were, I was sharing the gospel with him and he looked at me and he said, well, Joe, I believe in God. And I looked at him and I said, Grandpa, that's good. That's wonderful. But the devil believes and trembles at, at, you know, in God. He trembles when he thinks of him. Does that mean that just because the devil believes in God and trembles when he thinks of him, that he'll be in heaven? He laughed and looked at me and said, no, but I believe in God. Just like, just because you believe in God doesn't mean you've accepted Christ as your Savior. You can believe he exists. But it doesn't do a lot for you. 
You have to believe what? On the Lord Jesus Christ. And now she means, why? Because Jesus said, if you want to know who I am, I am the way. That's it. I am the way to the Father. Look with me, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. It says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. If someone's giving a gift, they're the one who makes the rules to get the gift, aren't they? Simple. If I were to hold a, a $100 note, and I were to stand by that door, and I were to hold it out, and I would say, here's the rules. The first person who walks by grabs the note and says, can I have that, Pastor? I will say yes and let go. And you walk out with a $100 note. And let's just say I stood there and everyone filed past me. And no one reached out, grabbed the note, and said, can I have that, Pastor? First of all, that would be a miracle. <laughs> one, I had a $100 note. Two, no one took it. But was it available to everyone who walked by? It was. But what do they have to do? They had to follow the owner of the $100 note's rules to get it. Yes? Do you understand? God is the one who gave his son. God is the one who, who gave you life. And God is the one who says, this is the way to me. It is by faith in Christ and Christ alone. One more thing, thank you, Bible Church, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. The Word of God says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the way? Faith in Jesus Christ. Hey, salvation comes through faith in Christ. That's why he stood there before me. He said, you know what? Guys, you want to know the way? It's right here. It's in front. He said, I am the way. But he didn't just stop there. So we see that Jesus Christ is the way to heaven. But we also see this. He is the source of truth about heaven. He's not only the way to get there, but you want to know about it? He, believe what he says. There are many errors about heaven. You know what I mean? There, there are many, many things that people will say about heaven that just simply aren't scriptural. Some think that heaven is on earth. Hey, if this is heaven, we're in trouble. Because last time I checked, heaven has no sin. Last time I looked around, there's a lot of sin. Right? Now be careful when we say that because, you know, the devil does go and, and, and before the throne of God, he does accuse the brethren, remember? You know, we see that in Scripture too. So, but there's no sin permanently in heaven. You know what I mean by that, Okay. Some think only 144,000 will go to heaven. Some think that. Well, if that's the case, there's a lot of people in the world today. How do you know if you're one of the 144,000 or not? And by the way, the people who think that are usually Jehovah Witnesses. And here's the problem. If they believe that, then only male Jewish virgins can go to heaven. So looking around, we're all out, just about, you know. Uh, that's not true, though, okay? Some people think that about heaven. Some people think that heaven is just a state of mind. Man, I'm glad heaven's not a state of my mind. You say, why? It might be a troubling place uh, sometimes. Aren't you glad it's not a state of your mind? 
You know, because why? Because the, the devil battles in our mind and, and gets us thinking things and, and, you know, worrying about things and, and all those types of things. There are many errors about heaven. Uh, there are also errors who say, well, you know what? All Christians who die spend forever in heaven. That's an error. You say, why? Hey, if you want to spend forever in heaven, by all means, go right ahead, but I'd rather not. You say, why? Because at Jesus' second coming, who rides with him on, in white robes on white horses? All those in heaven. Yes? We return with him. And we come to rule and reign with him on earth. And then, guess what? If I, if I were you and I were with Jesus in the little kingdom when we go into eternity, I don't want to go back to heaven. You say, why? Because there's a new heaven, a new earth, and a new Jerusalem. I'd rather be there. Wouldn't you? So there's a lot of errors about heaven. Now, there's some truth about heaven that comes directly from Jesus in this passage of Scripture. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I'm finding it's, it takes me a lot longer to find where things are. When you're not familiar with the Bible, and you can't just... Anyways. John chapter 14, look at verse 2. Here's some truths about heaven. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. We learn this. Heaven is a place. It's not on earth. It's not a state of your mind. It's not, it is a real, actual place. Secondly, we learn from verse 2. It is a prepared place. Can you imagine? I mean, have you ever thought about this? If you look around this earth and you see God's handiwork in creating the earth, and that took him seven literal, six literal days, because the seventh day he rested, correct? Imagine what heaven would be like if he's been preparing it for the last 2,000 years plus. If this is what happens in six days. I mean, think about that one for a minute, you know? Not only is it a place, not only is it a prepared place, it is where Christians go at death. And, you know, verse 3 says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive unto myself that where I am ye may be also. We also know other parts of Scripture says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Also we see it's where Jesus will take us when he comes. Those are truths about heaven. Hey, we can depend on the words that Jesus gave us about heaven. So we know that Jesus is the way and Jesus is the truth. Now, lastly, we see that he is the source of life that continues. He's a source of eternal life. If you remember back in... Uh, in in John chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, In him was life. That's where we get life from. John chapter 6 and verse 35, we already looked at it. It says, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In this passage of scripture we just read, I am the resurrection. And last week we read in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. Can I tell you something? Life is precious. And it's a precious gift from God. And it seems the more and more in which we live, we have lost the truth in our culture of how precious life is. See, what do you mean? Well, we have a, you know, there's, there's abortion and assisted suicide and euthanasia and all those types of things. But you know what? Life is precious. God is the issuer of life. Each moment of life is priceless. You know what? This moment, you'll never get back. You'll never be able to do it again. You'll never be able to change it and all those types of things. Each moment of life that God gives you is precious. And here we find, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And then he says, if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. From henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, show us the Father and it suffice us. All right, you tell us that? Show me the Father and we'll be happy. 
Here's what he says. Have I, Jesus said to him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the, word, the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. He says, you know, Philip, you should know me. You should know it by now. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the way. Who is Jesus? He is the truth. Who is Jesus? He is the life. He is the one who gives life. He is the one who, who takes life. And, and he's the only one who provides us with everlasting life. If you believe in Christ, you're a son of God. You have everlasting life. This morning, the greatest gift you could ever receive on Father's Day is the gift of everlasting life from your heavenly Father. The only way to receive that gift is by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. By saying, Jesus, uh, who are you? Jesus says, you know what? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. You're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Savior, can I encourage you, do not let another day go by without accepting your Heavenly Father's gift and putting your faith and trust in Christ and Christ alone, turning from whatever it is that you thought would get you to heaven to only Jesus. He is the only way to heaven. Now, if you're here today and you know Christ as your Savior, can I tell you something? Be encouraged. Be encouraged with these truths about heaven. With the promise of eternal life with Christ. It's not something special that you've done. It's only what he's done. And it's by putting your faith and trust in Christ and Christ alone that you have everlasting life. It is a wonderful thing to know these things. There's no greater thing you could ever know. There's no greater gift any father could ever receive, any child could ever give than what our Heavenly Father has given us in Jesus Christ. So you're wondering who Jesus is? Well, he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And apart from him, there is no way to God. There is no truth, and there is no life that's worth living. Father, we come before you and Lord, we thank you so much for who you are. And Jesus, we thank you for not leaving us to wonder, but plainly stating and telling us who you are. Lord, we thank you for being all these things, but Lord, most importantly, we thank you for being our way to knowing the Father, to having everlasting life with him, with you forever. And Lord, I pray that this day as we think and, uh, and, and honor the, the earthly fathers that you've given us, Lord, may we never forget that you as our heavenly father and all that you've given us. And Lord, if there be anyone here today that doesn't know you as your Savior, may they not leave today without getting that settled and receive, putting their faith and trust in Christ and receiving that precious gift that you so freely offer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, the last song we're going to sing this morning is entitled, Jesus Paid It All. May you all stand and we will sing, Jesus Paid It All. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is more, child of we once and pray, find in me thy all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin that left a crimson stain, he was it white as snow. 
Lord, Thou indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper's spots And melt the heart of stone Jesus made it all All to Him I owe See that leper crimson stain He was it white as snow For nothing good have I Whereby thy grace to claim I'll wash my garments white In the blood of Calvary's Lamb Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Seen at leper crimson stain He was it white as snow and when before the throne I stand in Him complete Jesus died my soul to save My lips just to repeat Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe See the leper crimson stain He was it white as snow Thank you. You may be seated. All right. Thank you for coming out this morning. Again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. As you leave, uh, please do remember to stop by the table and grab one, one gift for yourself. Also, on the way out, there was so much food that was provided for morning tea. Uh, if you'd like to get, keep eating, uh, go for it. Uh, they, they've left it out there uh, for you to have. There's some drinks there's some drinks out there. If you want to take some home, take some home. Um, if you can find something to put it on, all those types of things, we're glad that you're here. I uh, look forward to it tonight, 5 o'clock. We'll be having our regular evening service at 5, uh, continuing our study of the book of 1 Thessalonians. If you're able to be back this evening, we look forward to seeing you uh, then. And then Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we still have our prayer meeting and Bible study. If you'd like the Zoom link, let me know. I'll get that to you. You're welcome to join uh, in with us. Um, also on the table, there's bundles of gospel tracts, invitations to church that are about 500 in, in the bundle. Um, if you'd like to grab a stack and letterbox around where you live and just get the gospel out and invite people to church, uh, please grab a stack. If you run out of those stacks, there's a box there with about another couple thousand of them in there. Uh, we'll be happy to supply you if you'd like to uh, letterbox areas and uh, get the gospel out and invite people to church uh, in that way. And I look forward to that. All right, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the privilege we have uh, to have been together uh, in your house this morning. Lord, we thank you for the church family that you've given us and all those who are here. Lord, we think of those who are not, whether they're unwell or uh, whatever reason that is, may you bring them back again to us safely soon. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.